these devices that are used in scientific studies, um, let me know if I'm wrong, but I don't think they're shielded. I don't think they mitigate for EMS, anything like that. I don't think that the labs are shielded or anything like that. So we cannot really differentiate in in the scientific literature a shielded device versus a non-shielded one. Let's say one that emits just the beneficial frequencies and one that also emits the bad stuff uh, above the levels that are considered, let's say, biologically active. Is there or is it is there even science around that? I'm not aware of any science. I'm just curious about, uh, do you think there's extra benefits? I think logically speak, like logically speaking, scientifically speaking, it's plausible, but we kind of don't have the proof of that unless we're talking about hypersensitive. So is this just a story for you of hypersensitive individuals reporting that they feel better compared to other devices? And what are your thoughts on this? I'll give you my two cents because Brian and I, Brian Hoyer and I just kind of uh, had a spirited discussion about this on the topic of Flickr. So uh, because, again, I, I, I said to him, you know, there's so much data on red and near infrared light therapy using LEDs. And these scientists aren't going out and sourcing Flickr free stuff and yet they're seeing benefit mm -hmm. and so i was even skeptical i mean our, our devices are mitigated for flicker but in the beginning i was um still skeptical of well how much of an issue is this it's an acute stress you're only using the light for 10 minutes it's the eyes are typically closed how much of a issue is flicker and so brian uh, in 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 red light therapy specifically i'm not talking about the lights above me or the, the computer screen which yes. is a, you know more of a chronic exposure so i'm differentiating between chronic and acute um having said that again i come back to, to the extent that we can mimic nature it just seems like the wise thing to do and there is no flickering light in nature and so just on the basis of that we don't have the research yet uh but if you're going to choose which two, which of two roads to go down, I'm going to always choose how can I be more similar to what's going on in nature. And so mm. for that reason alone, we take the flicker out. Brilliant. Yeah, Brian. it's really wise. Uh, you know, you are correct. If you look at the light therapy studies, if you look at the sauna studies, there's no differentiation between shielded and unshielded devices. In fact, in the sauna research, uh, the lion's share of the research that indicates, you know, long-term disease benefit and lifespan, lifespan extension and reduction in all-cause mortality is being conducted with Finnish saunas that are not always wood-fired. Quite often, the modern Finnish sauna is, is an electric coil heater sauna that emits pretty high electric field and magnetic field. Nonetheless, you're seeing the results. Same thing with, with light therapy. The vast majority of the research is, is performed with LED-based technology that is not shielded. And yet we're seeing a lot of benefit. But if you step back and say, okay, separately, we also have separate research that indicates that that man-made EM, that that um, man-made EMF, non-native EMF, has an influence on cellular biology, mm -hmm. and it can be beneficial, but it also can be uh, an adverse effect. And if you look at Dr. Martin Paul's work out of the University of Washington, you see that the electric field that's probably you know you made. You may correct me, Mr. Hoyer, but the, the most ubiquitous electric fields nowadays are the cell phone signal in the microwave range. And when those electric fields in the air strike your cell, they open the voltage gated calcium ion channels, which you have in every cell of the body, and they cause oxidative stress, which leads to damage uh, eventually of the DNA through a kind of a complicated biological cascade. But we see that, uh, so we know that there's a cellular effect and we know that there's an association with uh, symptoms and disease in the literature. The highest concentration of these voltage-gated calcium ion channels in the body are in the heart and the brain, in the nervous tissue. And that's where we see in the research, in the EMF research, which you can, you know, uh, I know Brian Hoyer uh, has a lot of this, but also on the EMF portal, you can look up online. There's tens of thousands of studies. The highest correlation that we see of disease associated with cell phone use is brain tumors, neck tumors, and head cancer. You know, it's, so there's obviously a correlation between man-made cell phone exposure. If we just pick that one out and, and damage to the body. So yes, we don't have these specific studies where saunas that are shielded versus unshielded. We can't compare in parallel fashion, who's getting more benefit, 
if you step back and say logically in a, like a one-to-one analysis, uh, if you know there's a poison out there and you identify it, it makes sense to not include it in the experience, you know, in the therapeutic experience. And the man-made EMF is absolutely that. And it's back to really what Scott said. If we're mimicking nature, there was no cell phone signal. There was no flickering light. There was only sunlight. And, uh, and nowadays we have a billion, billion times more EMFs than were there before. So I don't think, you know, those, that research may come over time, but if we already know, wow, photobiomodulation light therapy is so beneficial, 7,000 studies or more now. And we know that sauna is amazing and other things as well. Well, let's do those practices, but also understanding that most of the man-made EMF that's used for communication technology is damaging to us. And man-made electricity, the electric fields from that are damaging to us. Let's do whatever we can that's practical to minimize our exposure to it. And it's not just in our therapeutic spaces, you know, with Brian Hoyer's company, Shielded Healing, it's it's in our sleeping space too, and, and maybe even our entire home space. And we have solutions out here. And it's a question of explaining to the public at large, this is an issue. It's something to consider when you're spending your dollars. This is an important thing to invest in. Uh, one of the more important things. And as we increase awareness in this, people, you know, people appreciate it more. I personally have a ton of customers. I mean, most of my customers have some kind of underlying condition of some kind. It's probably the minority of our customers that are super healthy biohackers mm-hmm. coming to the space. People come with a problem. I have a problem seeking a solution. I heard sauna is good. I heard light therapy is good. And a huge, there's definitely a significant population of electro uh, electro uh, electro hypersensitive individuals and i have a ton of those in our customer reviews and tons of customer reports absolutely throughout um the history of sauna space that uh anecdotal reports of course of people who can't use a regular sauna they can't use an electric sauna they can't use a farm fred sauna because they're the, the type where we're all sensitive to emf it it messes with all of us but there are some of us that are health compromised and for one reason or another, we're more sensitive to these things, or we're maybe very optimized and very healthy, and therefore also very sensitive to these things. And just noticing uh, the the the, the mal influence of man made electric fields, and they don't want that in their product. So we're we're offering that. We're seeing that in the market. The research, you know, if you're waiting for the perfect research to show you all this, you know, you'll be waiting forever. Yeah. But we are we but but there's a there's a substantial body to say that EMFs are not good, man-made for the most part. Let's avoid them. And 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 light therapy and sauna and other wellness modalities are are great. Let's incorporate them into our lives. Hey, this is Nick, the EMF guy Piano. I am the co-creator of the EMF Circle, along with my colleague Brian Hoyer from Shielded Healing. What you saw today, this short video, is a preview of the longer interview that we did for our Circle members. Every month, we have a masterclass like one of these or a Q&A session with me and Brian most of the time. So you get personal support and attention on your EMF reduction journey. So if you want to reduce EMF because you are personally sensitive or you're just trying to take precautionary measures to better your health and minimize the risk associated with wireless and other types of EMFs, then the EMF circle is the place to be. We have a ton of archives now. We have several months worth of Q&As that you can and listen back to everything is pre record is recorded you can either join live or just listen to the replay so we have a cars masterclass we have a pr- free protection masterclass uh, uh, also that we did and we're going to have several other masterclasses moving forward so we hope that you join us inside the emf circle just visit emfcircle.com or click the link under the video to join us i hope to see you then